Hello everyone. This video is going to be for section 7.3, trig substitution. So first off, important for this section are going to be uh, just some basic knowledge of trig. We don't, uh, you know, you don't have to be stellar at trig. What we do need to know is we need to, we need to be comfortable with some definitions of the tr basic trig functions, right? So if I have an angle theta, okay, and let's, we're always gonna be dealing with uh, right triangles in this section, okay? So remember the definition of sine theta as, remember it's opposite over hypotenuse, right? Okay, so if I'm looking at this, this angle theta here, what would be the opposite of that angle? The side, meaning the side opposite to that angle, okay? This would be my opposite, right? And then hypotenuse, the longest side of the triangle would be there. And then adjacent would be this thing, okay? So sine theta would be this side over that side, all right, opposite over adjacent, or excuse me, opposite over hypotenuse. And then cosine theta, remember cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. And then tangent theta would be opposite over adjacent. And then we have the other functions like, uh, let's see, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. All right. So we gotta know the definitions for all those uh, trig functions. Uh, these most of all, but for this, you'll probably in the course of the homework use all, of, all six of them, okay? So I'll let you investigate the other three by yourselves. So we're gonna need to know these definitions for this section. So that's just a little word of warning, I guess. Uh, another thing to say, and it, it's again, it's really not too important. Uh, this part's not really too important, but we're going to be using a method called inverse substitution, which is basically just kind of like backwards U substitution. Okay, so don't freak out about this. Like you're not, you know, you're, you don't really need to learn this whole new method. In fact, you should be able to treat it like U substitution. Most of you probably won't even notice much of a difference, okay? So the idea is we're gonna start with an integral in terms of X, okay? And then we're gonna replace X with a trig function, okay? A trig function in terms of theta, okay? And uh, so we're gonna make this type of U substitution. And just like with uh, U substitution, you know, when we made a use of uh, substitution for x, we also had to make a substitution for dx. Okay, so it's going to be very similar. Uh, and it's going to seemingly make our integral more complicated. But what we're going to be doing is we're going to be uh, replacing x with trig functions, and then we're going to use trig identities to simplify everything. Once, once we have our integral in terms of these trig functions, we're going to use trig identities to simplify our integral. Okay, so that's the idea. So let's just dive right in with an example, and I'll kind of explain our reasoning as we work through this example. Let's look at the integral of square root of nine minus x squared over x squared uh, <coughs> dx. So just look at that integral for a second. If I tried to integrate it in terms of x, I can't really do that, right? There's no nice u substitutions I could use to, uh, simplify things, you know, this is, using our techniques that we know so far, this is uh, an easy integral, okay. But look at this term nine minus x squared in the numerator, okay, let's just think about that. Uh, this reminds me of the Pythagorean theorem. Maybe that doesn't jump out to you right away, but that's fine, okay. So remember that the Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared, okay? Where c is the hypotenuse of my right triangle, right? So uh, I can rewrite that formula like this. a equals square root of c squared minus b squared, okay? So let's do a new page real quick. I got a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And so a equals square root of, uh, c squared minus b squared, right? Now let's let's uh, see what this tells me about this, okay? 
square root of nine minus x squared. How is this connected to this idea of triangle? Okay, so if I draw this triangle, let's say my hypotenuse would be C, right? And then let's say this is B, well then this would be A, which we know we just said is equal to C squared minus B squared. Okay, so now let's draw a similar triangle for, for this statement, okay? Well, let's see, my square root stuff, let's see, I'll put that down here. This would be nine minus X squared, okay? And then that would make, let's see, this side three and this side X, right? Think about it, I have, uh, if I squared three, I would have nine. And then if I subtract away x squared, that should give me the length of this side squared, right? Okay, and then I take the square root of that. Okay, and I get the length of my side. Okay, so for uh, the important part, what I wanna hammer home is that if we have an expression like this, I can make a triangle out of this, uh, where this side would be three, this side would be x, and this would be square root of nine minus x squared, okay? I can always do this as long as x is less than or equal to three and greater than or equal to negative three, right? If x is outside this, then nine minus, well, now this is gonna be a negative number and then I'd have some complex stuff, right? So that would be ugly. But as long as X is in between negative three and positive three, I can always make a triangle uh, out of this. Okay? And let's, let's say this angle here, let's call that theta, okay? All right, what do I know about theta? Okay. Now, now think about uh, the sine function, or excuse me, the trig functions of theta, right? What would sine of theta be? Think back to our definitions of our trig functions. This is opposite over j or opposite over hypotenuse, right? So what's the opposite? The opposite side of theta? Well, that would be just x. Okay. And what's the hypotenuse? Three. Okay. So let's now just solve for x, basically. So multiply three to both sides. Now I'd have three times sine of theta equals x. So I've taken, what I've done is I've taken this uh, square root here. I've kind of created a triangle for it. And then I've rewritten x in terms of this triangle. Okay, I know that x is gonna be equal to three times sine of theta, where theta is this angle here. So this is where my, my substitution is coming from. I'm drawing a triangle for my radical, and then I'm rewriting x in terms of that triangle, the trig functions of that triangle. Okay. Okay, so we're here. So I've taken my radical, I've drawn a triangle for it. I'm saying, hey, let's call this angle theta then I can write x uh, is equal to three sine theta. Okay. Now I've, I've said this will work as long as x is between negative three and positive three, okay? That's uh, gonna be equivalent to theta between negative pi over two and pi over two, okay? That's not too important, it's a little technical detail that you're gonna see in, if you look at the textbook, that's where this, uh, restrictions coming from. Don't worry about it too much. You're never really, eh, maybe on the web assign homework, it'll ask you for these intervals, okay? But I'll cover that in a problem video if it's necessary. Okay, so we've said that we can write X in terms of these thetas, this trig function of theta. So X equals three sine theta. All right, so let's say this is kind of like our U substitution it's not, it's kind of a, we said it's an inverse substitution, all right? So it's not really a U sub, but it behaves pretty much the exact same as U sub. So remember when we did a U sub, we had, you know, we, we had our substitution line here, and then we did this kind of pseudo differentiation on both sides. So if I have X, that's gonna become DX, and if I'm saying I have three sine theta on the right side, well, that's gonna become 
three cosine theta d theta. Okay. And now this is actually even simpler than u substitution because uh, I just need these two steps. I never need that third step where I would divide three cosine theta from both sides. Okay, so I, I'd stop here. Okay. Now let's go ahead and make our substitution. Okay, so uh, we said x is equal to three sine theta. So everywhere I see an x, I'm gonna replace it with three sine theta. So x squared would become three sine theta squared. Okay. And this x squared on bottom would also become three sine theta squared. And then I'm replacing dx. Let's see, dx is equal to this. So here I'm replacing dx with three cosine theta, d theta. Okay. And then I get this integral here. So square, I just square three sine theta. Okay. And when I square that, it becomes nine sine squared theta, right? All right, now we can factor the nine out of this radical on top, okay? So I'll just write it over here. Nine minus nine sine squared theta. Well, that's equal to square root of nine, one minus sine squared theta, right? And then I can pull the nine outside the square root as long as I take the square root of it as I do. So these things are all equal, okay. all right? So that numerator becomes three times square root of one minus sine squared theta. And then it's divided by nine sine squared theta. And then I have three cosine theta over here. Now let's just take all the constants out of our integral. Okay, so I take this three out. I take this three out. And I take this one over nine out. And I should get three times three over nine. Okay. Oops. So I get three times three over nine here, and really the, that stuff's all gonna cancel, right? Inside, I'm left with square root one minus sine squared over sine squared times cosine theta. And now we can use our trig identities to simplify even further. So remember, sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. So one minus sine squared equals cosine squared, right? All right, so let's write one minus sine squared as just cosine squared, and then I have this guy. All right, now what can I do? Well, we said we're gonna restrict ourselves to when x is equal uh, between negative three and three, which means this angle theta is between pi over two and pi over two. So my, uh, my range of thetas in here, okay. So when I do that, okay, so all my, my uh, triangles that I could possibly draw are gonna be in this kind of right half of the plane, okay. Okay, so my, maybe my triangle's here, maybe it's here, but I know it's, it's always gonna be somewhere in this right side of the plane. So when I do that, when all my triangles are on the right side, this cosine, the cosine of whatever angle this is, that's always gonna be positive, okay? I can never have negative values in this right half plane for cosine, okay? All right, so this cosine squared, okay? I know cosine is a positive number, okay? Let's say it's positive, okay? So when I take the square root of that positive number, it's, it's gonna be positive, okay? It's, it's not like I'm, uh, so normally when we say, uh, I I'm taking the square root of a number, you know, maybe it's ambiguous, right? Maybe it's, well, is this coming from three or, well, let me uh, rephrase this. Let's say if I take the square root of nine, right? Uh, this always gives me a positive number, but I know in the back of my head, well, actually it could be positive three or negative three. Right? 
if I plug it in my calculator, it always gives me a positive number. But if I'm looking for like the solutions of this, if I'm looking for the solutions of something like this, well, it could be positive x or negative x, right? But as long as I'm <clears throat> restricting myself to this right half plane, I know my cosines are always gonna be positive, so I don't have to worry about this negative stuff, okay? <clears throat> this is kind of a complicated way of saying that when I take the square root of cosine squared of theta, that's just gonna be simply cosine theta. The square and the square root are gonna cancel, and I'm just gonna be left with this. Maybe that seemed really obvious to you guys. We, um, and in this section, it's always going to work out nicely like that. Okay, so you shouldn't have to worry about square roots uh, in this section. In later sections, it'll be more important. But for now, you know, square roots and squares are going to cancel nicely in this section. Okay, so square root of cosine squared, it just becomes cosine. Okay, so this becomes cosine. And then my cosine from here, okay, just made this. So I have cosine to times cosine over sine squared. Okay, well that's just cosine squared over sine squared, right? Well, cosine squared over sine squared, that's the same thing as cotangent, right? So I have cotangent squared theta d theta. Now using another trig identity, I couldn't integrate this, right? I can't integrate cotangent squared. But if I write it as cosecant squared, I can integrate this. And maybe you have to look at your table of trig integrals, but integral of cosecant would be negative cotangent. And if, I'm, if I integrate one, this one, in terms of theta, it would just become theta. So my antiderivative is this, negative cotangent theta minus theta plus c. So you might be tempted to say we're done at this point, but just like with u substitution, I get an antiderivative, but my original integral was in terms of x, right? So I want my, my final answer to be in terms of x. Now this is where this uh, trig substitution is a bit more complicated than u substitution. How do I get back from uh, thetas, these thetas to x's, okay? Remember my my original substitution was x equals, uh, we said it was three sine theta, right? So that doesn't really tell me anything about cotangent theta or theta, right? We have to look a bit closer. Okay. So remember that triangle we drew uh, for this substitution. We said we had this triangle Okay, uh, where the hypotenuse was three, this side was x, and this side was nine minus x squared. Now remember the definition of cotangent. What is uh, cotangent of theta? Cotangent of theta is adjacent over a uh, excuse me, adjacent over opposite. Okay, so for this triangle, adjacent would be square root of nine minus x squared. Opposite would be x. So we can say that cotangent of theta is equal to this square root of nine minus x squared over x. And what about theta? What's this theta here, okay? This, this, uh, this triangle doesn't really tell me anything about the value of theta, okay? But think about our original substitution. We said x was equal to three sine theta, right? So let's try and solve for theta in this. First thing I would do is divide both sides by three. So I have x over three equals sine theta. And then if I did sine inverse, okay, that should give me theta. And again, okay, as long as I'm in this right half plane over here, sine inverse is gonna give me one and only one value, okay? so. Let's see, uh, sine inverse is gonna give me angles, right? So uh, sine inverse of every possible triangle is gonna give me just one value, okay? So I don't have to worry about ambiguous values, 
Okay. So all those triangles are going to give me a unique value for sine inverse. Okay. So again, that's just a technical point. It's not going to be an issue for you. It shouldn't be an issue for you guys in your homework. Um, but it just allows this uh, trig substitution to work. All right, so let's combine our information. We said this thing was our antiderivative in terms of theta, and we want to undo our substitution. We looked at our triangle and saw, well, this is my cotangent theta, so I'm going to write that. And then we said, well, theta, from our original substitution, we know theta is sine inverse of x over 3. And then I plug in my uh, constant of integration here. Okay? So this thing should be my antiderivative. Okay. All right. So remember, this, uh, we did all this for this radical 9 minus x squared. right? And the trig substitution was based, all the trig substitutions we're going to do are going to be based on these radicals that we see. Okay, this trig substitution is useful when we see radicals like this. Okay, and the trig substitution we make depends heavily on our form. Okay, so I have 9 minus x squared. I could think of that as a minus x squared, where a is a constant. Uh, what other possibility, possible radicals could I deal with? I could deal with radical a squared plus x squared. And I could deal with radical x squared minus a squared. And each one of these has its own trig substitution, its own triangle. So there's, uh, for every, uh, rad every one of these three radicals on the left side, there's a kind of corresponding triangle. And, and we have to, be able to get from the radical to the triangle. Okay, so there's a table in the textbook, and I'll kind of recreate that table below uh, of information. But um, let's go ahead and scroll down. Actually, okay. So this is our table of information. All right. So we on the in the left column we have uh, the possible radicals we might see, where a is a constant. So a could be you know a squared could be nine. It could be 16, 25, but in our integral, it's always going to appear as a, a constant, a number. Okay. And then in the middle, we have the substitution we, we should make for each corresponding radical. And then in the right column, we have the, the triangle that goes with them. Okay. So this might seem like a lot of information to memorize. Um, there's a way, so I, I don't memorize this information. What I do is I kind of uh, logic it out. I'll kind of show you my thought process for each each radical. Okay, so let's say I have a squared minus x squared, and maybe to help, we'll we'll stick with uh, a number. Okay, so let's say we have sixteen minus x squared. So in other words, I have four squared minus x squared. All right, what would be the substitution? What would be the triangle that goes along with this? I'll show you my thought process for figuring this out. Okay, so always keep in mind this, this formula. We're always thinking about this in terms of kind of the Pythagorean theorem, right? So if I have something minus something, right? Okay, well this, to make sure that this is a positive number, this should be bigger than x squared, right? And in fact, this, this four squared should be the hypotenuse, okay? Because the only way I'm gonna have something minus something is if it's, a squared equals c squared minus b squared, and then I you know, take the square root of both sides. Okay. So when I have something minus something, that should always, that, that number in front, that, that term in front should always be the hypotenuse. Okay. So looking at this four squared minus x squared, I immediately think, okay, I have a triangle and four should be my hypotenuse. Okay. And then there is some leeway here on, on which of these should be x. But let's go ahead and uh, maybe this is where some information could be in, uh, some, some memorization could be involved. Let's always go ahead and make that x, okay? The opposite side for this, for this particular radical, okay? 
And then, well, what's left, the only thing that's left is, you know, four squared minus X squared, okay? So I've, I've kind of reduced, you know, through, through this logic, I can kind of uh, reduce the amount of stuff I have to memorize, right? And then I can just recreate what needs to be recreated, all right? All right. And then let's, let's always, uh, and just to help, let's say all our triangles are always going to be like this, where I have the right angle. It's always going to be a right triangle and the right angle is always going to be in that right corner. Okay. Here. Okay. And then let's say theta is always this angle. Okay. That again will help reduce some memorization. All right. So now <clears throat> What do I know about what's what should be my trig function? Well, I know, you know, let's see, x over four equals sine theta. So x equals four sine theta. Okay. So that's the kind of logic I use. And now let's let's try and apply that logic to a different so uh, different radical. Let's try a squared plus x squared. Well, a squared plus x squared, that should give me the hypotenuse, right? Because I'm adding these two positive numbers together. It's going to give me the, the largest of the three, a squared plus b squared. That should give me c squared, right? Okay, so if I have, again, I'm going to go ahead and draw my triangle. I'll put the right angle there. I'll say that's theta. Okay, well, my hypotenuse should be a squared plus x squared. And again, maybe I have some leeway on what should be my... Uh, what should be my, which side should be my x. Okay, so for this one, um, let's see, where's, so x equals a tangent theta, so x over a, so this should be our x, this should be our a. Okay, maybe there's still some memorization here that we should, okay, still say that's x. All right. And then what's our last substitution, our last, uh, radical. Okay, we have x squared minus a squared. Okay. All right. Again, I'm going to start with this kind of this uh, standard triangle. X. So now I have something minus something. Remember what I said for the first radical. When I have something minus something, this this should be our hypotenuse. So x is my hypotenuse. And then what is the rest of my, what are the rest of my sides? We'll say that's A and this is then what's left, X squared minus A squared. Okay. All right. And then once I have uh, the, this triangle, I can make uh, my trig substitution or I could, you know, just memorize this table. Okay. When I see this radical, oops. So when I see this radical, I know I need to make this substitution and have this triangle, okay? And so on. All right. So this is the data we need, but let's talk about the steps involved. And I'll formalize these steps. Again, I think it helps to kind of have a, a layout of exactly what we need to do. And then I'll uh, do some example problems applying these steps. Okay, so when I'm solving uh, these trig uh, substitution problems, what are, what are my steps? What do I do? The first thing we do is we're gonna we're gonna have a integral with one of these one of these three radicals in it. So the step one would be to identify which which situation we have. Okay, and that's just as easily easy as looking at this table. You know, it, on a test, you're not gonna. Uh, well, let's see the test this semester are open book, so you can just look at this section. Um, so that, that should be pretty straightforward. Okay. Uh, then just write out the substitution and X equals blank and DX equals blank. So remember that when we do our substitution, we have to change X, all our X's, and we have to change our DX, right? Step three, I would go ahead and draw the triangle at this stage. You could, you could wait till the end, but I, I like to do it at the beginning. Okay. Step four is to substitute this stuff this stuff up here into your integral. 
All right, so still pretty straightforward. Number five, okay, this is where we start doing some work. Uh, use trig identities to start simplifying everything. Okay, so we got to know the trig identities, you know, sine squared plus cosine squared equals one, uh, tangent squared plus one equals secant squared, etc. Then after we simplify, we're going to integrate. Okay, integrating in terms of theta. Remember, we've changed our integral from x in terms of x to in terms of theta, okay? And after we do our simplification, it should be a straightforward integral, okay? Then we get an antiderivative in terms of theta. So step seven, we don't uh, want it in terms of theta, right? We started in terms of x, so we want to end in terms of x. So step seven, we have to undo the substitution of the indefinite integral. and uh, if it's definite, we have a choice, just like with u substitution, right? So think back to our u substitution section. We integrated, we made our substitution, we integrated, and we have this antiderivative in terms of u, right? Then if it was an indefinite integral, we had to change it back to x. If it was a definite integral with bounds, we had the option of, well, we could kind of change our bounds a little bit and just plug in our new bounds, or we could... Uh, undo our substitution and use our original bounds. So just like with u substitution, we have this, for definite integrals, we have this choice whether or not we undo the substitution. But for indefinite integrals, we definitely have to undo the substitution. So how do we undo the substitution? Well, for the, all the trig functions, uh, like sine, cosine, tangent, et cetera, we're gonna use the triangle and the definitions of the trig functions. For if if our integral if our uh, if our term is just theta or like theta squared something like that, we would use um, our original substitution. We need to use like our inverse trig stuff. So meaning if we had our original substitution equal to x equals three sine theta, then we write x over three equals sine theta, and so sine inverse of x over three equals theta using that idea. That's what I mean by the inverse trig, okay? So these are our steps. So let's, let's try a problem and I'll, I'll write out these steps, okay, as I go. So we have square root of x squared minus one over x to the power four dx. Step one, identifying our, our substitution, okay? So I have, I have radical x squared minus a squared, right? So where a is equal to one, right? So this is my case. Uh, this is the, my, uh, let's see, in my table is the second or third case. It's x, x equals a secant theta, okay? It's gonna be this third case. So I should use the substitution x equals a secant theta, okay? All right, so I've identified it, and let's go ahead and write that out. So I should do x equals, a is one in our case. So I have x equals one secant theta, or just x equals secant theta. And if x is this, what should my dx be? I'm gonna do my little differentiation to both sides. What's the def derivative of secant? Secant theta, tan theta, d theta. All right, and what's my triangle? Okay, so let's, I'll do another example of this logic. So let's kind of write it, go ahead and write our standard, uh, standard triangle. Um, what should my hypotenuse be? X, right? Because I have X squared minus A squared. This should be the hypotenuse. Okay, and then let's see, if I'm using, x equals secant theta, right? That means x should be um, hypotenuse over adjacent. So x, you know, x is the same thing as x over one. So x is my hypotenuse, one is my adjacent. Okay. So I have x here, one here, and then that leaves only this possibility, x squared minus one. Step four, let's go ahead and make our substitution. Okay, so x squared minus one over x to the fourth dx. 
we'll turn that into secant squared minus one over uh, secant to the fourth. And then my dx becomes secant theta tan theta d theta. All right. Step five, simplifying everything, right? Okay, what's secant squared minus one? That, from my identities, I know is tangent squared. And then I got secant of the fourth still. Secant theta tan theta d theta. All right, and then as I explained earlier, as long uh, it's you shouldn't have to put too much thought into it. Um, but if we're within our kind of uh, our, let's see, uh, if we look at the kind of restrictions on page four eighty six of our textbook and we're within those restrictions. So for, for this case, it would be um, theta is between zero and pi over two or pi and three pi over two. As long as we're within those bounds, um, this square root of tangent squared should just be tan theta. Okay, and now let's start canceling some stuff. So let's see, I have a tangent here, tangent here, and then I have secant over secant of the fourth. So that should be equal to what? Tangent squared over secant cubed d theta. And now, uh, now we just have to solve this integral, all right? So might be intimidating. Hopefully from seven two, you guys have developed some skills with these trig integrals. Um, let's see, let's try this. Let's write tangent squared as sine squared theta over cosine squared theta. And then secant cubed one, uh, so this one over secant cubed theta, that's the same as cosine cubed theta, right? Okay. And then this cosine cubed uh, divided by cosine squared, okay, that's gonna cancel out two of the cosines and I'm just gonna be left with sine squared theta cosine theta, d theta. All right, and now I can do a u substitution. Or I could just remember, you know, uh, it's uh, this would be definitely 7, 2 material, right? Uh, what do I do when I have an even power of sine, odd power of cosine? I would do u equals sine, du equals cosine d theta. Okay, so my antiderivative should be, let's see, u cubed over three plus c. I need to undo my u substitution, so I'd have sine cubed of theta over three. All right, so now I have my antiderivative in terms of theta, but now I need to undo my theta substitution, right? So I need to get back in terms of x. So now is where I would look at my triangle, right? Okay, so let's see. This would be like step six, right? Integrating. Step seven, I need to undo my substitution. Okay, let's see. What was our original substitution? We had x equals secant, right? And we had this and that. We had this triangle. All right. So what's sine of theta in terms of this triangle? Sine is opposite over 
hypotenuse. So let's see, opposite would be x squared minus one. Hypotenuse would be x. So x squared of x squared minus one over x is my sine theta. I'm cubing this, dividing by three, adding c. Okay. So let's see, let's just clean this up a bit. We could write x squared minus one, the square root of x squared minus one to the power three. That's the same as this over x cubed plus c. And that should be my antiderivative. Okay, let's see uh, an example of a definite integral problem. Okay, using the same steps, same setup. Let's try this from the textbook. So I have dt over square root four plus t squared. Okay, so this is, you know, if the dt, position of the dt is throwing you, just remember this is the same thing as, okay. All right, so let's see, step one would be identifying our um, case, right? So we have a squared plus t squared. Okay, so this would be uh, the case where we, uh, we um, do the substitution x equals a tangent theta, right? So in this case, we would want to use x equals two, uh, two tangent theta. Okay, and if x equals two tangent theta, then dx equals two secant squared theta d theta, right? And what would our triangle be? All right, I have, uh, I have this case a squared plus t squared, right? So this is gonna be my hypotenuse, right? That's gonna give me the largest side of my triangle. So I should have, uh, this side would be two squared, or I can leave it as four plus um, x squared. And then let's see, this would be x, this would be two. All right, now uh, I can do go ahead and make my substitutions. Okay, so uh, my original integral dt over square root four plus t squared would become dt over let's see four plus for tangent squared theta. I'll replace, oh, I need to replace dt with what? Secant squared theta d theta. All right, so let's, let's go ahead and bring that theta back here, or that d theta back here. All right, what about my bounds? So just like with u substitution, you know, I, I could change the bounds. All right, so what would my bounds be? So how do I find my new bounds? Well, let's see, I I'm gonna use this here, uh, this line here, x equals two tangent theta. And I'm gonna plug in my bounds for x, okay. So let's write down what I have. So x equals two tan theta, all right. So x over two equals tan theta. So tan inverse of x over two equals theta, okay? So if my bounds in terms of x are zero and two, okay? Let's, let's do the lower bound first. I'm gonna plug zero in for x here. So what's tan inverse of zero over two? Well, that's tan inverse of zero. So what's tan inverse of zero? That's zero, okay? Oh, I wrote theta. And then what's tan inverse, let's plug in two. When I plug in two, I get tan inverse of one, right? What's tan inverse of one? 
Well, that would be uh, pi over four. Okay, so my new bounds, if I wanted to find my new bounds, those would be zero to pi over four. Okay. I'll leave the bounds off and kind of address that issue at the uh, at step seven. Okay. All right. Moving on to oops. Moving on to step five. Okay. Simplifying. Uh, I have secant squared over four plus four tangent squared. And blah blah blah. So. Recall we have this. Let's try and simplify. I can pull the four. The four is outside of my radical, right? Oh, and I'm missing a four here, right? And in fact, I have been this whole time. No, I'm missing a two, that's what I'm missing. So remember we had dx equals two secant squared theta, so I'm missing a two here and a two here. Okay. So I'll pull that two out front and then I pull a four out of here, it becomes a two, right? So I should have two over two and the stuff inside should be one plus tangent squared theta, theta. All right, trig, uh, so these cancel, these constants cancel. Uh, one plus tangent squared becomes secant squared. Square root of secant squared is secant. So I have secant squared theta over secant theta. equals just integral to secant theta, d theta, right? All right, so now this might be not be an integral you guys remember, but how can we integrate secant theta? It's just gonna be ln absolute value of secant theta plus tangent theta, I believe, plus c. Okay, so this would be step six, right? Integrating, okay? So we get this antiderivative. Step seven, Okay, so now we have a choice. Now um, we have the choice about whether to undo our substitution or just use our new bounds, right? So I'll, I'll do it both ways. Uh, let's call this, this first way A, okay? So I could just, oh, and there's no C here because it's a definite integral, right? We're doing a definite integral this time. So the first way to do this would be to use our new bounds. Okay, so I can just plug in pi over four to or zero to pi over four into this. And uh, that would be my, that would give me the answer. Or I could undo my substitution and then use my original bounds. So let's do it this way first using the new bounds. We would have ln of, let's see, what's secant pi over four? That'd be two over square root of two. And then tangent of pi over four, that'd be one, right? And then minus ln, let's see, one plus zero, okay? Let's see, this is equal to ln of square root of two plus one minus, this is ln of one, which is just zero equals ln square root of two plus one. Okay. All right, so that gives me an answer. So that would that would be an answer, all right? And then I could be done with this problem. The other way to do that, if I, if I, didn't, if I didn't change my bounds uh, earlier in the problem, right? I end up with this antiderivative, okay? If I didn't change my bounds, I would have to undo my substitution and use my original bounds, right? So let's see, the triangle we had in the beginning was this. Okay, I think we have this. 
Yes, we do. So if this is our triangle, what's secant theta and tan theta? Secant theta is hypotenuse over adjacent. So that's ln of two over, oh, no, excuse me, ln of uh, four plus x squared over two plus what's tangent of theta? That would be x over two. Okay. Evaluated from what, two to zero? Those are our original bounds. Okay, so let's plug those bounds in. Okay, when I plug in two, uh, I get square root of eight over two plus two over two, so plus one minus ln, let's see, square root of four over two plus zero. Okay, and then this simplifies to the same thing we had before. ln square root of eight over two, uh, that'd be square root of two. That simplifies as just square root of two plus one minus ln of one, okay. So we get the same answer. Okay. So two different ways to do that step seven. All right, so I think that covers all the lecture material. I will put out a problem video with many more examples to help you guys kind of get a feel for how this works. I just thought of uh, some hints that might help you guys. Okay, so maybe in the course of 7.3, we uh, make some substitutions, and then we get, after simplification, let's say we end up with something like um, cosine squared theta d theta. And uh, how do we deal with that? So remember from 7.2, we would turn this into 1 half 1 plus cosine 2 theta d theta, and then we integrate... So, well, we could simplify this as one half plus cosine two theta over two d theta. Then we integrate, right? And I'll get one half theta plus sine two theta over four. Uh, and then let's say it's an indefinite integral. So I get something like this. Now I need to undo my substitution, right? Well, the theta here doesn't give us any problem. Let's say our, our original substitution was x equals four sine theta, all right? Then x over four, let's see, sine inverse x over four would be my theta. And let's see, if x equals four sine theta was my substitution, then I would have something like what? x for um, 16 minus x squared. I would have a triangle like that, right? The problem is this is for theta, okay? So any, anything I do here like uh, four over x would be sine of theta. What is so did I do this right? No, this triangle's wrong. It should be, okay. okay. So sine of theta would be x over four. The problem is in my antiderivative, I have sine two theta. Okay, so how do I deal with that? Well, when I see sine two theta, Remember that this is equal to, one of our trig identities is this, sine two theta equals two times sine theta, cosine theta. Now I can find each of these for my triangle, right? For my triangle here, okay. Sine theta would be x over four. Cosine theta would be square root of 16 minus x squared over four. And then I got a two out front. And then let's see, since I'm dividing by four here, I'll divide by four. All right, so the important point I wanna say is, okay, if you ever get an integral where it's like sine two theta and you're trying to 
undo the substitution, remember that identity. Okay. And uh, yeah, that, that should be about it. Um, so keep those identities in mind when inverting stuff. That is my last little tip.